Welcome, everyone. The topic of my PhD is NOAA strategies in advanced interventional cardiology and vascular treatment. My name is Reika Iramberger. I'm a full-time PhD student. My vision is to improve patient care in Hungary and also worldwide through evidence-based innovative healthcare solutions. And for this, my mission is to provide forward-looking and NOAA scientific results in coronary artery and vascular treatment. In my presentation, I will introduce my three ongoing projects. And uh, I will start with my first and most advanced one, investigating the effectiveness of treatment modalities for calcified coronary lesions. Calcified coronary diseases are also called end-stage coronary diseases, and their prevalence is reported between 18 and 26 percent in the latest registries. As you can clearly see, the calcification in the coronary plaque can define the adverse event rate, and because of the resistant plaque burden, the calcified coronary lesions require additional treatment modalities, so-called plaque modification techniques. We have multiple options uh, on this regard, but we don't know which is the best because the guidelines are unclear. So our aim is to examine the effectiveness of the treatment methods for calcified coronary lesions. In this study, we are analyzing rotational thoracotomy combined with either the workhorse devices, the plain balloon techniques, or combined with the dedicated devices, which are in this case the modified balloon types, the cutting and the scoring balloon. We will analyze, we are analyzing uh, the outcome of MACE as a composite outcome, major adverse cardiovascular event. Um, performing this meta-analysis, we will provide evidence for the most optimal treatment for moderately and severely calcified coronary cases. And um, the hypothesis of ours is uh, that the combinations of the dedicated devices, so uh, rotational thoracotomy combined with the modified balloons, um, can significantly reduce the MACE rate. Based on the selection criteria, we ended up with a total of eight studies for the quantitative and nine studies for the qualitative analysis, including almost 1,000 patients uh, from two RCTs and uh, seven observational studies. Our primary outcome was the aforementioned MACE as a composite outcome, including acute coronary syndrome, all-cause death, repeated revascularization, instant restenosis and stent thrombosis. Using the effect measure of odds ratio, these are the results uh, of an average fall-off period uh, of one year. Um, seeing this effect size, 0 0.59, we can state that um, um, the overall adverse event rate is almost half as much in case of the modified balloon group than the plain balloon group. Although, I would like to emphasize that we have one paper that has a great influence on our results and also can be declared as an outlier. The biological reason for that is, might be the um, significantly more severely calcified cases in case of the modified balloon group than in the plain balloon group, which can obviously result in more um, adverse event rate on, uh, in that group. Also, I would like to highlight that we have one, uh, two more um, studies that also included not just severe but moderate cases as well, but the difference between the two groups um, are not that uh, outstanding uh, like in this uh, first study, the Alali paper. So based on these facts, we decided to have a separate analysis omitting the Alali paper. And uh, seeing the results, we can uh, say that our hypothesis is now not just clinically, but mathematically supported as well. Following this line of thought, we have also a separate analysis, including only those papers that included only severely calcified coronary lesions. And uh, these results um, are really consistent with the previous uh, one, but we have a clearer picture for the treatment of uh, uh, the severely calcified coronary cases. For overall conclusion, I would like to uh, highlight uh, that we can state that patients, and especially uh, those who have uh, severely calcified lesions, can benefit from the application of modified balloon types after rotational atectomy treatment. Uh, and based on this and uh, the available uh, data and evidence, 
or analysis uh, suggests that the combination of the two dedicated methods should be implemented and uh, protocolized for uh, the treatment of severely calcified coronary cases. We are currently writing the manuscript and uh, you can see here the target journals uh, of ours. In my second study, we plan to examine modern and purpose-built hemostasis devices via multi-center um, uh, prospective randomized control trial. Um, <clears throat> brachial artery serves as an, as an alternative puncture point in interventional cardiology in case of the radial artery isn't available for us to puncture. When it comes to the hemostasis uh, of the brachial artery, it remains a question um, uh, what device to choose, but uh, the most commonly used one is a compression-based device. Although uh, there are no uh, non-compression-based ones, like the ketazan and the potassium ferrate-based devices, that uh, forms a, group, a special group of hemostasis devices that can potentially decrease the adverse event rate that can be encountered in case of an arterial um, approach and can be as high as 20 or even 25 percent um, uh, in case of a brachial arterial approach. The problem is that uh, we have no clear guidelines on this regard so clinical trials are really needed to help evidence-based decision making. So um, probably now uh, our goal is uh, clear for everyone and uh, the importance of the question uh, is stated. So in this uh, study, we will compare the novel non-compression-based devices to the compression-based bandage by the analysis of a composite outcome, the DOCHA, uh, device-oriented composite endpoint. And, um, uh, by this analysis, uh, we believe that we can uh, provide a better solution for the hemostasis of the brachial artery. And uh, last but not least, my third uh, study, which is uh, with the methodology of meta-analysis as well, uh, comparing the safety and efficacy of uh, left ventricular unloading strategies for venoarterial ECMO in patients with cardiogenic shock. When it comes to cardiogenic shock, uh, VA ECMO, or venoarterial extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, uh, is often um, used uh, as a component of the complex care. However, there are uh, problems and also challenges uh, with this uh, device due to the retrograde aortic flow it causes and uh, leading to negative hemodynamic effects and also uh, inadequate decompression. As a result, the in-hospital mortality rates and also the overall adverse event rate can be quite high. Um, but fortunately, there are some um, uh, devices available um, that can help support the left ventricular's um, left ventricular function and also uh, decrease these negative effects and uh, reduce these uh, adverse uh, event rate. Um, Although we have several options and multiple options available in this regard, um, the best methodology remains unclear. So based on that, um, our um, study, uh, our study's uh, objective is to compare these methods to each other to enhance the uh, treatment outcome of uh, cardiogenic shock. Uh, for summary, um, I've presented uh, my three ongoing projects, which are for the goal to um, uh, help, uh, help the um, uh, practitioners with uh, evidence-based uh, decision-making. And uh, the, um, um, yeah, uh, so I believe that uh, my presented and, uh, and future research can adequately serve this purpose and uh, provide a better outcome for all of the patients in interventional cardiology especially. Thank you for your attention. Congratulations for your progress. My question uh, regarding to the first investigation that uh, do we have information about uh, how the studies uh, define the uh, severe calcified uh, lesions? Do they uh, prepare pre-procedural CTs uh, or uh, did, we, uh, did they count syntax score or how did they define the, the severity of the calcified lesion? Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for your question. Uh, one problem is that I already uh, stated uh, that uh, there is no um, standard um, way to, to assess the calcification in the coronary plaques. Uh, most of the cases uh, in these papers, they used only the um, angiogram that uh, uh, they already had. Uh, two of the cases, they used uh, IVUS, which is uh, intravascular ultrasound, and uh, in one case, they used in one case they used the uh, OCT, which is a more precise um, um, visualization technique, but also more um, uh, so um, uh, costly one. So. Uh, in general, we can say that um, in, in um, the everyday practice, we can't really um, assess the calcification for every patient uh, based on uh, some um, standardized method or IVUS or the OCT because um, we don't have really a, the time and also um, um, it, it's really uh, expensive. Uh, so, um, it, it also um, reflects the everyday practice that we, um, almost every case we, we uh, assess the calcification based on the coronarogram. Um, so, that's what they did <laughs> too. But yeah, we, we need one, some ways to standardize that because it can um, reflect or, or change the results, uh, obviously. But thank you. Thank you. Maybe a pre-procedural CT can be uh, investigate, be a process to, where we can investigate the volume of the, of the calcium. Uh, yeah, CT is the one way, but uh, you know um, the problem is that sometimes the CT um, is uh, so. If if we look at the CT, we see that oh, it's really calcified. But uh, but the other hand, if we really look into the coronarogram, we say, see that it's uh, almost nothing, so sometimes it's, it's, um, it's not uh, correlates with the uh, coronarogram and the actual calcification there. Uh, Thank you. Calcium scoring is mainly based on the CT, but uh, it can be overscored, I think, yes. by the CT. Uh, may I ask you the cost uh, on the compression uh, devices or non-compression devices comparing uh, to a compression bandage, which is the simplest thing? Uh, I can't really say an actual cost, but uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I uh, understand the question. Um, these are, are more expensive devices, but, uh, but we already have uh, experience with them and we can say that um, they can worth it, um, especially in case of the brachial artery. Uh, the adverse event rate can be lower. Uh, we, we can't really see how much <laughs> uh, is this difference, but we will see hopefully. And uh, maybe we will do um, cost effect um, analysis as well if we can. Um, it will be really optimal. We will see what we can come up. Come up.